Bobby, have you heard the news? News? What news? About International Sterling's beautiful new pattern. No, no, Harry. We're not supposed to tell about that until later. Can't we tell anything about it? Well, we can say the solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of International Sterling, presents the amusing transcribed adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Let's see what's going on at 1847 Rogers Road today. For one thing, I see two young boys walking slowly up the hill toward the Nelson's house. Hey, can that possibly be David and Ricky? Hmm. Well, it looks like them, and yet they look so dejected. David seems to be limping a little bit. Say, his trouser leg is torn. Golly, I hope it's nothing serious. Does your leg still hurt, David? No, it's okay. Boy, you sure fell down hard. I know it. You skidded along the ground and nearly turned a somersault. Okay, I know. Forget about it. Don't get sore at me just because you lost the race. Okay, so I fell down and lost the race. Imagine losing a race to Bobby Hamilton. That's what I say. He can't even run. That's what I say. It wasn't a fair race anyway. You know, it seemed like somebody pushed me just as I got close to the finish line. Yeah, that's it, David. He came back and pushed you. I hope Mom doesn't notice this rip in my pants. Maybe she won't. Does it look bad? It looks like you pulled the zipper down too far. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Pop. Hello, boy. What's the matter, David? You look as if you lost your best friend. It's nothing, Pop. Oh, David, look at your good pants. How did that happen? It was nothing, Mom. Well, something must have happened. It was nothing important. You're not going to volunteer to tell us, David? Could I volunteer, Pop? <laughs> Ricky, if David doesn't want to answer our questions, that's his business. In this house, everybody's allowed to lead his own life, keep his own counsel, follow the dictates of his own conscience. If David doesn't want to give us any information, that's up to him. Then can I go up to my room now, Pop? Don't you want to tell us what happened to your pants? <laughs> Shall I shine the bright light in his face, dear? All right, I'm sure David has no intention of keeping secrets from his parents. Now, how did you tear your pants, David? It was nothing, Pa. Now can I volunteer, Pa? <laughs> no, Ricky, this is strictly David's affair. David, I wonder if you understand why we want to find out about those pants of yours. We're not prying. I'm asking purely because, as your father, I want to be helpful. And I'm asking because, as your mother, I'm dying of curiosity. <laughs> now, tell us, how did it happen, David? He and Bobby Hamilton were showing off... Hey, wait a minute. Is your name David? Huh? I said, is your name David? No, sir. <laughs> well, let David answer for himself, Ricky. What happened, David? We were having a running race and I fell down. You want to know why? You keep quiet, Ricky. I was talking to Pop. Is your name David? Yes. <laughs> Why were they running the race, Ricky? They were showing off for Betty Jackson. They ran a race and David fell down. Oh, David, don't you think that was a little silly, running a race to impress a girl? What could I do, Mom? Just stand there and look like a sap? He looked like one anyway. Now, Ricky, that's enough. It was a foolish thing to do, though, David. If a girl likes you, you don't have to show off to impress her. Well, Harriet, I hate to interfere when you're trying to make a point to the boys, but I'm afraid I have to disagree on that. Oh, you're in favor of skinning knees and tearing trousers? David's condition is a result of a natural effort to win the girl of his choice. The skinned leg and torn trousers are wounds of his battle. Bobby's challenge in front of Betty was like a slap in the face with a glove. The race was like a duel. Those running feet were like the clanging of swords. The fall was like the blade cutting deep into his heart. <laughs> <laughs> 
Guy, I'm lucky I wasn't killed. <laughs> well, David, take your mother's word for it. You don't have to show off to make a girl like you. David, take your father's word for it. A girl loves to have you show off for her. You forget, Harriet, I'm in a little better position to know what a woman likes. Well, this may be news to you, dear, but I'm a woman. <laughs> Mom's right, Pop. Harriet, you may be a woman, but I'm more qualified to say what a woman likes because I'm a man. Mom's a woman and Pop's a man. We're a neat family, boy. <laughs> This has worked out very well, Ricky. No, I really shouldn't let you in on the tricks we use to trap you unsuspecting females, Harriet. But in defense of David, he was quite right. Woman, being the weaker sex, is always impressed by physical prowess. That's been going on since the days of the caveman. Is it okay if we go out and play ball, Mom? Certainly, dear, but change your trousers. Hey, wait for me! And if you guys are going to do any batting, go down to the vacant lot. Harriet, don't you remember any of the things I did to impress you when we were kids? Riding the bicycle, no hands. Ginning myself in the schoolyard. I remember you were a very nice boy. Going off the high board up at the lake. I liked you the first time we met. Swinging that big hammer and ringing the bell at Palisades Park. You were always so considerate. Mother was very fond of you, too. I was a regular daredevil and it worked. <laughs> you married me. Wouldn't have married anybody else. What really made you decide on me? Your eyes. My eyes? Yes, I'm sure if I'd refused your proposal, you would have cried. <laughs> Harriet, the boys have gone upstairs. You don't have to try and prove your point anymore. You know as well as I do that girls are attracted by physical prowess. They all fall for that hero stuff. You want to play ball with us, Pop? Hmm? Yeah, it might be fun to play a little baseball, David. Just give me about five minutes and I'll get my old clothes on. Uh, Ozzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You know, the more I think it over, you're absolutely right. What are you talking about? There's nothing that impresses a woman quite so much as a man's display of physical prowess. His bulging muscles rippling up and down as he leans forward and throws his weight into the task ahead of him. Uh, Harriet. His legs are weary. His back is breaking. But still he plunges onward, intent on completing his task if it kills uh, Harriet. him. Harriet. Yes, dear? On my word of honor, I'll mow the lawn tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, David, throw me one. Keep your eye on the ball, Ricky. Here she comes. Where'd it go, Ricky? Over the fence? Look out of your head, Pop. Oh, I got it. Here you are, David. Let's have another one. Here she comes. Look out, Pop. Keep tipping him. I got it. This bat is awfully thin. Hi, Ricky. Oh, hi, Mr. Thornberry. Oh, hi, Thorny. Well, it's you, Oz. Well, who'd you think it was? Joe DiMaggio? Oh, really now, Oz. From what I saw, I thought it was some scientist out there trying to contact the moon. <laughs> Here's the bat, Thorny. If you think you can do better, go right ahead. Oh, thank you, Oz. Furthermore, I think I'll pitch. You pitch? Okay, Oz, if you want to make it easier for me. We'll see about that. You want to catch, Dave? No, we won't need a catcher, Ricky. The ball won't get that far. All right, Barney, this is the famous Ozzie Nelson splatter ball. Fire away. Here she goes. I see we have a comedian on the mound. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. I had that orange in my pocket and I couldn't resist it. <laughs> hey, Pop, there's Mom over there. Hi, Mom. Hello, dear. Uh, Thorny, there's Harriet. Hand me the bat. Why, what's she done to you? <laughs> I just want to show how I can hit the ball. Look, Thorny, just lob me an easy one so I can powder it. Oh, but, Oz, how will I look in front of Harriet if you're belting my pitching all over the lot? Do as I ask you this once, will you please, Thorny? All right, Oz, get up to the plate. We'd have a jolly time if I could get my hands on a cantaloupe. Mom's looking this way, Pop. I know she is. That's why I want to smack a good one. Okay, Thorny, sting one in. Strike one. Mom's waving back at you, Pop. I wasn't waving, Ricky. I was... <laughs> You're lucky that time, Thorny. Pitch another. Strike two. You're coming closer, Pop. <laughs> Why don't I just roll one and see if you can kick it out? <laughs> don't worry about me, Thorny. Hi, Harriet. Hi. Strike three. You're out, Pop. <laughs> Pitch me another. You have three strikes, Pop. This isn't a regular game, David. 
Come on, Thorny. Oh, the only way you'll ever get it is if I mail it to you. <laughs> Don't go away, Harriet. Come on, pitch the ball, Thorny. Shall I throw it underhand? You might as well. You do everything else that way. <laughs> Come on, let's see your speed ball. Strike four. Uh, here it comes again, Oz. Strike five. <laughs> Once more, Oz. Strike six. Let us know when you're out, will you, Pop? <laughs> Stop showing off, Thorny, and put one over the plate. Hey, wait a minute. I have a better idea. Here, David, you bat for a while, and I'll catch. Okay, here's the mask, Pop. That's pretty small. I guess I can get it on okay. Uh, don't go away, Harriet. Thorny throws him pretty hard, but watch me catch him. All right, let's see your speedball, Thorny. Here we go, Oz. Harriet, right, are you watching? Look, look out! Gee, Oz, I didn't realize you weren't looking when I pitched. Are you okay? I think so. Oh, oh what am I sitting on? Your foot. It's twisted under you. <laughs> oh, this darn mask is stuck on my face. Here, I'll give you a hand. Let me get a hold of it. Maybe I can help. I think it moved then. No, that was me. You're dragging me. <laughs> We'd better get that mask off before your face swells up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can walk. Oh, my foot hurts every time I move it. I don't wonder. You swung around and sat right down on it. Oh, how am I going to get home? David, go get that wheelbarrow over there by the fence. We can wheel Daddy home in there. Oh, don't be silly, Harriet. That thing's for hauling junk around. <laughs> if you could see yourself now, Oz, you'd climb right in. <laughs> I think that's the only way we'll get you home, dear. Okay. Help me into this thing. Uh, oh. Ricky, be quiet, will you? I feel conspicuous enough as it is. Back in more attention to me. Are you all right, dear? Yes, I'm all right. Of all the humiliating experiences. A mass of twisted steel on my face, being pushed home in a wheelbarrow. Harriet. Yes, dear? If you see anybody we know coming along, I'll close my eyes. You just tell him I'm drunk. <laughs> International Sterling. Creators of the loveliest solid silver in the world present the new pattern, Queen's Lace. Queen's Lace. Its inspiration might have come from a fairy tale. And suddenly, the queen appeared. Her robes were spun of shimmering lace. And on her head was a beautiful crown, woven of silver flowers, as bright as the moon. Queen's Lace. Never before have you seen a silver pattern of such regal loveliness. With unbelievable delicacy, the master craftsmen of International Sterling have created an enchanting reproduction of old Irish lace. Atop each knife, fork, and spoon is a gleaming crown of silver flowers fashioned with exquisite beauty. Queen's Lace is holding court at your International Sterling dealers right now, and you'll want to see it as soon as possible. When you do you'll know that here is the pattern to hold sway over your heart. Queen's Lace is artist-designed, finished in every detail as superbly as crown jewels. Solid silver with beauty that lives forever. Tomorrow, see the new reigning beauty of all silver patterns, Queen's Lace, created by famous International Sterling. Ever since man first began to notice woman, about 500 years after woman began to notice man, he sought to win his mate by physical prowess. 
In the days of the caveman, he would simply choose the woman he wished to have and take her by brute force if necessary. We now show you a typical caveman, just plain Neanderthal Nelson. Una? Yes, Neanderthal. Me, Neanderthal, want you, Una, for woman. Me, Una, don't like you, Neanderthal. Una, if you don't say you marry me, I'll hit you with his club. I won't marry you. No. Now will you marry me? No. Now will you marry me? Never. All right, I'll marry you. I don't want you now. You're a mess. Yes, there's no doubt about it. It's the big he-man that makes a hit with the women. Many are the colorful stories that have come out of the turbulent days of the Old West. Howdy, stranger. What's your name? Texas. Texas, huh? Where are you from? Arkansas. <laughs> What's your name? Arkansas. Arkansas, huh? Where are you from? Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> what are you doing in front of the school marm's house? If you're thinking of courting her, she's my gal. He's my gal. Well, we'll see about that. We'll settle this right here and now. Stand back to back, take ten paces, turn and shoot. I'll shoot my gun in the air first as the signal to start pacing. Here we go. Shut up, you you got me. You were supposed to shoot your gun in the air. Doggone, I always was a poor shot. <laughs> you didn't fight fair. You're a sick man. Just don't think about it. <laughs> now I'm going to see the school marm. Ain't seen her for a long time. A long time. Mighty long time. <laughs> yes, there's no doubt about it. It's the big he-man that makes a hit with the women. The most recent demonstration of man's physical prowess for the benefit of a woman happened just today, and the result lies there on the sofa in the form of Ozzie Nelson, the man in the iron mask, the man with a twisted ankle. The consultation seems to be in progress. Barney, will you stop stroking that imaginary beard of yours and get this bird cage off my face? How about soap? That's the way you get a ring off your finger. Now, that's an idea. We could soak your head in a bucket of soapy water for about ten minutes. I found this hacksaw in the garage. Would this be of any use? Just what we need, Harriet. Hold still, Oz. I'll have this off in a jiffy. <laughs> what a horrible sound that makes. Hold still, dear. I think something is starting to give now. I hope so. Okay, now, just let me have those pliers. Now, she's coming. There we are. Oh, what a relief. Thanks a lot, Barney. Oh, don't thank me, my boy. You're out now. All I ask is that you go straight. <laughs> We're going now, Pop. We'll see you later. Oh, that's right. Your game's this afternoon, isn't it? Well, lots of good luck, fellas. I hope you win. Thanks, Pop. Thanks, Pop. Here you are, dear. Put your foot in this hot water. Oh, that feels good. Oh, you poor dear. You must be miserable. Here, let me fluff up that pillow. Now, I'll make you a nice, cool eggnog, and I'll get some magazines for you to read. You just take it easy and just rest. Aunt, how can you stand to be treated like that? You mind your own business, Thorny. Here's the magazines, dear. Now, I'll go make your eggnog. Don't you hate to be babied? How many eggs do you like, dear? Uh, two, Harriet, please. Well, if you like this sort of thing... I think I'll be on my way. Are you going home? No, I think I'll go down to the playground and see if I can't get hurt, too. <laughs> now I've the mixer. How do you feel? Like a chump. What are you talking about? Oh, it must have been pretty obvious that I was showing off for you. I thought the way you stopped Thorny's pitch was very clever. Harriet, don't make up excuses for me. I'm not making up excuses for you. 
And come to think of it, it's pretty wonderful to think we've been married 13 years and you still want to impress me. Yeah, I'll bet I made a great impression. There aren't many women who've had the opportunity to walk down the street, meet friends, point to the contents of a wheelbarrow and proudly say, that's my husband. <laughs> Don't be so silly. I'll be back. Where are you going? Over to the market to buy some of those porterhouse steaks you like. Keep your foot in that water. Oh, hello, Mrs. Nelson. I was just going to knock. How's Mr. Nelson? Oh, he's much better. Thanks, Emmy Lou. It must have been awful with that catcher's mask stuck on his face. It was, but he had the cutest turned up nose you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm leaving, but go on in. Oh, hello, Emmy Lou. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. Here, a little present for you. Oh, thanks. What are they? Not cookies. Well, that's very appropriate, Emmy Lou. And here, this is a box of candy for Mrs. Hodges and a box of peanut brittle for Mrs. Dennison. Mrs. Hodges and Mrs. Dennison. Oh, they shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. Oh, they were very happy to. You know how women love to rally around the fallen warrior, so to speak. How's your ankle, Mr. Nelson? Oh, it, it's pretty good now, thanks. The swelling is going down. My, what a lovely foot. <laughs> Lovely? Oh, yes. It's, it's so graceful. Those long, artistic toes. <laughs> I'll bet you have some kind of talent, Mr. Nelson. Oh, I play the piano a little. Pick up your other shoe and play something for me. <laughs> <laughs> I usually play by ear, if that's of any interest to you. <laughs> Well, I don't think so. Not today. Is there anything I can get for you? Are you hurt anywhere? Oh, I'm all right, except for a fractured ego. You're looking at a crushed man, Emmy Lou. A man humiliated in front of his own wife. I tried to be a hero, and I'm a flop. You aren't, Mr. Nelson. Don't say such a thing no. because it isn't true. Uh, you're wonderful and kind and sweet. Well, Mrs. Nelson loves you. She doesn't care if you're a flop. No, it's... <laughs> Women are all alike, Emmy Lou. They like the hero, the winner. It's always been that way. Oh, no, Mr. Nelson. That may be true in movies or in books, but in real life, it's just the opposite. It's the mother instinct. All women love to baby their men, to, to cater to their little weaknesses and vanities. What woman could love a big hero? We love the loser, the underdog. I'm going to the school dance tonight, and I'll bet there'll be plenty of girls with boyfriends who've never been outstanding in anything. But they'll be proud of their day. And I'll be proud of my day. Uh, who are you going with, Emmy Lou? Donald Crowder. Uh, who's Donald Crowder? Who's Donald Crowder? Who's Donald Crowder? Have you asked me who's Donald Crowder? I wouldn't have if I thought it would upset you so. <laughs> oh, Mr. Nelson, he's a pitcher on our baseball team, a star forward on our basketball team, and captain of our football team. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Emmy Lou. Oh, yourself. <laughs> How are you feeling, Pop? Oh, fine, thanks, Ricky. Uh, how'd the game go, David? David hit a home run. Betty Jackson saw him. She's really stuck on him now. Really? You can read it for yourself all over the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you, David. David? Something the matter, David? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. He's been like that ever since Betty kissed him. Well, yeah, I see a red smudge on your cheek. How old is Betty? Eleven. Oh, then it couldn't be lipstick. No, she was eating a hamburger with ketchup on it. <laughs> I can't understand it. As soon as I got to the playground, she asked me about my leg. Well, I was very considerate. She said Bobby must have pushed me. Then she kissed me. Then when I hit a home run, she kissed me again. Twice, boy. It made me sick. <laughs> well, it's obvious what happened, Dave. You see, Betty was attracted to you because you were the hero. She kissed you because you hit the home run. But, Pop, she kissed me before the game, too. Because we lost the race this morning. He was using any old excuse. <laughs> David 
David had an experience. It proves my point perfectly. David hit a home run at the game today, and little Betty Jackson kissed him. David? Gosh, not David, Mom. Daisy boy. <laughs> Oh, well, isn't that nice? I can't understand it. Oh, it's simply this, David. When you hit the home run, little Betty impulsively kissed you because you were a hero. And women like a man they can admire. You see that so far, don't you? Sure, Pop. Now, on the other hand, when you lose a race, when you fall down... That is, when you lose a race, when you fall down... David, are you sure you didn't win that race this morning? <laughs> Well, maybe I can help you out. When a little girl likes a little boy, she just likes him. If he's a hero, she likes him because he's strong. If he falls down and gets hurt, she gives him sympathy and helps him up. When a woman loves a man, there's not very much he can do about it. She runs away from him, and he starts chasing her and chasing her until finally she catches him. make it sound a little like trapping muskrats, but I think your mother's right. <laughs> you mean Betty is already planning on marrying me? Could be, David. Holy smokes, I'm going to be an uncle. Choose Queen's Lace to reign over your table. Queen's Lace, because it's the loveliest silver pattern you've ever seen. Queen's Lace, because it's solid silver through and through. Queen's Lace, because it's so much easier than you thought to buy. Yes, choose Queen's Lace, International Sterling's exquisite new pattern. Queen's Lace is everything you ever wanted in silver for your home. Imagine it on your table, those gleaming knives, forks, and spoons... There's distinction in the lovely floral crown that tops each piece. Delicate beauty in the lace openwork. The edges of tiny, perfect beading. Regal splendor in the sweeping lines. And like all international sterling patterns, Queen's Lace is solid silver with beauty that lives forever. Through each generation, it will only grow lovelier, richer, and warmer. And that makes it a really economical purchase. A purchase that's much easier than you thought to make, too. For your international sterling dealer has an easy payment plan for you, especially suited to your own budget. So tomorrow, see Queen's Lace. Choose Queen's Lace, the exquisite new pattern created by International Sterling. <laughs> Yes, Ricky? How did that stuff go yesterday? Uh, what stuff? About women trapping men. All that? Well, what your mother said in so many words was a man may use physical prowess, but the woman really does the pursuing. Why do you ask? I found out it was true, boy. Really? What happened? There's a new girl in school. I use physical prowess, and she prowess me. <laughs> No kidding, Ricky. What happened? I hit her with a ruler and she chased me all the way home. <laughs> Tune in next week to another transcribed adventure of Ozzie and Harriet, starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, the solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. Yes, Harriet, the solid silver with beauty that lives forever is... International Sterling. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were David and Ricky Nelson, John McIntyre, Janet Waldo, John Brown, and yours truly, Vern Smith. Original music was composed and conducted by Billy May. This is CBS, a Columbia Broadcasting System.